Um, if we could just come back to um, your policy work. So how has that been for you moving to Wellington and working in policy, which um, I think for me, I didn't realise until I got here, just how non-diverse that policy space can be mm. um, sometimes. How have you navigated being a Basvika woman working in a non-diverse space? It's been challenging, to be honest, um, but it's also been one where, okay, if I'm going to play this game, well, the mainstream kind of game where it's, I guess, lacking in, in our voices, I'm going to have to try and really upskill myself to understand um, understand it. So it's, you know, understanding how, I guess, like you, you've got experience to bear, is understanding what the what the layout of the, the law of the land, I guess, is in policy and trying to see how we can influence that with the Pacifica way of doing things. Um, and so navigating these spaces has been quite challenging for me, but it's also been quite empowering because I'm, I'm armed with a lot of our community's voices. Mm. And it's kind of like people are, oh my gosh, you know, um, are sort of open, but are so challenged by our, our voices. I don't know why, but I guess it's, a, it's, a, it's an area where I feel like representation is key and the leadership is key in terms of really pushing our community's voices there um, through into policy, I guess. But yeah, it's been challenging to say the least, but it's also been quite, um, I guess, an opportunity to really push mm -hmm. and advocate hard. Um, uh, yeah, I, it's just been, it's like, yeah, I would say challenging the most, but empowering to, to keep pushing forward. And what are the strategies that you've used to respond to the challenges? I take a real values-based approach. I really, um, you know, I'm guided by a lot of the things that I've grown up around respect, around love. And respect doesn't mean like you can't have a say. It's about respecting the space that you're in and mm -hmm. also making sure that when you hit, when you say something, you say it in a way that's um, respectful to your people. Because the last thing I want is to speak on experiences that I haven't experienced, um, but to really try and bring that voice forward and platform, a amplify other voices. And so I really take a values-based approach when I, when I engage in these discussions. And sometimes I win, sometimes I don't, but if I know that I'm always completely true with who I am and intentional, then there's, I can walk away feeling that I've left everything on the table. Mm. Um, so yeah, I take a really values-based approach when I'm engaging um, in tough discussions, yeah. Mm. I think it's really, um, I mean, you mentioned that when you're sitting at the table, you're bringing along all of the voices of the yeah. community with you. And I think that that's probably, um, you know, really powerful um, insight and, impetus mm. to add your voice yeah, yeah. and to engage in those yeah. discussions. It's really quite, it's also quite, I'm real mindful of that as well. Like I don't want to be, you know, taking an opportunity away from someone's experience to be at that table, but sometimes you're the only person. And so you're having to, oh my goodness, you have to really make sure that that comes with you. But I'm real conscious about uh, making sure that I amplify the voices, but when I need to, but also give the space for others, um, and so that's something that I always am conscious about when I'm walking into these spaces that you're there representing them, but you have to really try and bring that person in as well. If mm -hmm. that makes if that makes sense to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, it's not a substitute for doing consultation yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah, um, yeah for for really find, finding out um, and listening to the people who have lived experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly that.